Mad World. No, not the Gary Jewell song. Mad World is a beat em up hack and slash video game developed by Platinum Games, published by Sega, produced by Atsushi Inaba, and directed by Shigenori Nishikawa. It was released worldwide for the Wii, and yes, just the Wii, in March of 2009 and in Japan in February of 2010. It was created by Platinum Games, a studio founded by former members of Capcom's Clover Studio in their attempt to make a game that would be, quote, fun and attractive for the Wii, but that would also have a high level of violence that would make it unique for the system. The developers chose violence as the main theme of the title, but experimented with a variety of cartoon-like art styles to alleviate the violent content with a sense of humor, ultimately deciding upon a black and white aesthetic with splashes of red for blood. Inaba and Nishikawa acknowledged the influence of Frank Miller's Sin City in the work, but also noted they borrowed from both Western and Japanese comic book styles to create a unique style. Comic book style text and sound effects are also used in the game. With Platinum Games having a basis for their next project, little did they know they'd be developing upon one of, in my opinion, the best beat em up hack and slashes of all time. The combat and killing focused gameplay couldn't fit better in a setting where the goal for the player is just to kill every last living soul around them. This manga esque, almost exclusively black and white art style was perfect for the game in that it went hand in hand with the dystopian every man for himself battle royale-esque island the events of mad world unfold on it was a more than superb decision to only color in the blood as to remind the player what this game is all about constantly and to almost facilitate encouragement of taking action to kill even more with the stage of events set properly and giving the game such fun and pleasantly interactive motion controls the main attraction of killing is made addictively fun and a roller coaster ride of homicidal ideations guaranteed to get the player hooked to its very understandable sense of entertainment as well as put on some sort of government watch list. I don't think any developer, no matter how talented, could conceive of a more unique yet woefully underappreciated game to come out in the last 15 years. So it's not cool as that, so you can hate it, but the truth is that you fucking with the best, so we coming with the new shit, black cheer. I need to know how y'all feel. Three days before the game's event, the fictional Varigan City became a target for a group of terrorists called the Organizers, who severed the island city's transportation and communication ties with the rest of the world. They released a virus onto its population that would kill them in less than a day. However, the organizers informed the populace that any person that killed another would receive the vaccine. The city was quickly transformed into the stage of a recurring game show called Death Watch, with excellently acted announcers Howard Buckshot Holmes, played by Greg Proops, and former Death Watch fighter Chris Creeley, played by John Namaggio. Just take a listen to some of the hilariousness these guys spit. The Annie M! Annie M! It's a twister! Dude, you are so gay. Everything is bigger here. That's what she said. Sounds like my ex-wife screaming when I walked in on her having sex with another guy. She screamed because you scared her? Nope, she screamed because she said I was embarrassing her in front of the company. What? When did this turn into a fucking fishing show? Because you're a bass hole. We toss. I've shit farther than Jack can throw. Oh boy, it's my favorite time of the day. Time to huff some paint? Nope. Time to take a dump? Nah. That's the closest shave I've ever fucking seen. Jack banged that guy. He banged him hard. Jack is going to be banging guys all night with that gong around. He's going to bang a whole gang of guys. You're saying there's going to be a gang bang? Yes, we will probably see a big old gang bang tonight. Jack's got a hook in that guy deeper than the one my ex has in my box. That's what I call one hell of a blowjob. That is off the hook. More like on the hook. They say discretion is the better part of valor. I say discretion is the better part of being a fucking pussy. The remaining citizens of Arrogant City and New Hopeful Ones become the show's contestants hoping to become the top-ranked fighter in the game and win a large cash prize. Jack Kamen, played by Stephen Bloom, a man with a chainsaw attached to his prosthetic arm, enters the games and manages to gain sponsorship from Agent 13, played by Jim Ward. A dystopian setting couldn't have been a better place to host this plot, since it creates this chaotic cesspool of panic and discord, with the only way to get out of it being to kill everyone else so you're the only one that stays alive, making gamers indefinitely glad that they're 
not the ones actually in such a game show. Ahead of its time, since the Hunger Games series and Battle Royale were published before this, but this was right at the start of the whole dystopian media craze that took over every medium of creative work from earlier to the middle of this past decade. But when plopped into a world of meathead aggression, Platinum has players using motion controls incorporated into the Wiimote, presumably for enhanced interactivity and immersion. From a designer's perspective, I can get why this was their decision, as a gamer oozing with aggression looking to brutally murder their opponents in an inconceivably painful way, won't be satisfied with button mashing as it doesn't channel ferocity nearly as well, and motion controls on consoles outside of the Wii were finite. Mad World is divided into several levels representing different parts of Jefferson Island that have been converted into sets for the game show. The player progresses through these levels in a linear fashion during the first playthrough, but can revisit at any completed level to attempt to score more points or take on a harder challenge. Most levels are open environments, allowing the player to explore them more freely, although some sections of the level may require the player to earn a number of points before it will be accessible. A few levels feature motorcycle-based combat where the main character, Jack, is assaulted by foes as they race down a track or in a small arena. The player is challenged to beat the level's boss within a time limit, but in order to activate the boss fight, the player must accumulate enough points by defeating regular foes on the level with incorporation of other challenges, bonuses, or mini-bosses that become active after the player accumulates enough points. A common feature of these levels is the Bloodbath Challenge, a time-limited mini-game that rewards the player for completing a specific type of activity with additional points. For example, the player may need to attempt to swing a bat at foes to knock them into a giant dartboard to score points, or to ensure foes are trapped in front of a speeding train. All that Wii Sports baseball training came in handy, didn't it? Outside of these challenges, the player gets awarded points for every defeat of a foe. The number of points for beating foes increases by increasing the foe's power or using more unusual methods of winning. For instance, while the player could throw an enemy on the wall, the player will earn significantly more points if they had previously forced a tire around the enemy. Notice the game encouraging players to end as sadistically as possible. The player controls Jack from a third person perspective using the Wii Remote and Nunchuck attachment for attacks and movement, respectively. Mad World does not make use of the Wii Remote's infrared sensor as its developers found it unnecessary to pinpoint movements on the screen in order to attack. While certain special attacks are possible, the player is prompted to press a button or move the controllers in a specific fashion to complete the action. In boss fights, the player must trigger special finishing moves that engage their foe in a series of quick time events in order to weaken, dismember, attached weapons, or to defeat the boss, called power struggles. These are also possible against certain normal enemies. The game features extreme, over-the-top violence, but designer Shigenori Nishikawa intends it to be seen in a comical light, despite the dark tone of the game, but I always see it as both. For example, in a mini-game called Man Darts, players must hit enemies onto a giant dartboard with a baseball bat to score points. However, because of the intended level of violence, Platinum Games is unsure of whether or not the game will ultimately be released in Japan, stating, quote, In certain markets, there are a lot of limitations on the amount of violence you can show, so we definitely have the Western market much more in mind, end quote. Mad World features highly stylized graphics that use a limited color palette of high contrast black and white with red, partially inspired by Frank Miller's Sin City graphic novels. Mad World masterfully ties a dramatic comic book-esque dystopian setting with over-the-top violence, mostly resulting from the player's merciless actions executed by specific and well-fitted uses of the Wiimote's motion controls. It never fails to bring most any player a thrilling massacre of a game as they tear through human bodies like paper mache and spill the Pacific Ocean's worth of blood onto every inch of Varigan City. Cutting contestants up limb by limb with glitch levels of strength probably makes most players happy to contort the Wiimote in ways they never thought they would to use it for applications they couldn't even think of unless they committed first-degree murder more than once. 
There's enough action to keep the players as far on the edge of their seat as they can be, but enough to where enemies aren't coming from the same cloning facility just a few feet away. It's gut-wrenching and hilarious seeing anyone willing to mess with Jack get what's coming to them since gamers have Wii remotes and they're not afraid to use them. The soundtrack accompanying the killing sprees goes light years to add inconceivable depth to the game, and I don't think any, and I mean any, lineup of tracks could complement the disarray better. The music for the game was composed by Naoto Tanaka, Platinum Games' in-house composer, along with four different local artists, Ox, Doja Rays, Stick YG, and Bandy Leg. Tanaka wanted to quote, write in American-style music and tried to avoid a true Japanese style, end quote. At the request of Inaba, the music styles included hip-hop and rock, taking inspirations from the mashup album Collision Course from Linkin Park and Jay-Z. Tanaka created the backtracks, first using Cubase SX and Acid, then gave these, along with the general theme of the level associated with the music, to the artists for them to add lyrics and other performances. Tanaka received feedback from the American branch of Platinum Games to refine the music and get the western style down. Music was then assigned for the various stages and boss battles requiring some revision of the existing works to make the music more appropriate for that stage of the game. A total of 50 minutes of music was created for the game and a soundtrack of the game's music was released along with the game in the United Kingdom and Australia. The soundtrack was released in North America on June 30th, 2009 by Something Distribution. But with such a perfectly designed game, I was baffled to not see many reviews of this game on YouTube, and even more stunned to find out just how little copies of this game sold, especially when compared to other Wii games at the time. The game sold around 66,000 copies in its first month of release in North America, according to NPD Group, and did worse proportionally in Japan, where it only sold around 3,000 copies. These sales numbers have been used by market research firm OTX Research to justify their assertion that hype and marketing don't translate into sales figures. Mad World, while commanding, quote, the highest level of unique interest based on user input at IGN, ranks 41st in OTX's sales metric for all Wii titles. Sales of the game have reached 123,000 units in North America as of August 2009. Mad World fared much poorer in Japan where it debuted at number 33 on Japanese sales charts and only selling around 3,000 units during its release week. The game did receive positive reviews from critics with the April 2009 issue of Nintendo Power giving it a 9 out of 10 rating and IGN giving it a 9 out of 10, praising the style, gameplay, and music, but criticizing the camera in short length, though it mentions that the hard difficulty level lengthens the game and increases the challenge considerably. Pixel Hunt called it one of the few must-have Wii titles. StageSelect.com praised the title for its artistic game design, but stated that the overall delivery had trouble living up to the hype. This frustrates me since something I believe to be so quality should have done better with the video gaming market commercially, even if its presentation was overhyped. I think its commercial underperformance was due to the Wii's main demographic being very young children mostly interested in the Tom and Jerry style cartoon violence that they were accustomed to, since actual blood being spilled in a Nintendo game was unfathomable, and nobody ever died in a video game. They usually just got defeated or beaten by the player. A miscalculation by Sega, but I can understand why they went with motion controls for such a game, since there weren't that many other successful consoles at the time using them. As someone who constantly raves about horror, I know why people are deterred from over-the-top violence and creative work that puts blood and gore at the forefront, but Mad World was better executed than so many other games on the Wii, which includes the ones backed by massive amounts of AAA investment capital. I encourage any gamer and or video game critic to check out this 2009 masterpiece for themselves, knowing the slapstick fun and enjoyment so long as their stomachs can handle it because I seek to promote what I think are quality video games, and this is more than an excellent piece of software I think should be discussed and played more. But beyond being talked about and played, I think the mythos of Mad World should be vastly expanded upon, with an anime, manga, sequel, spin-offs, lore books, and anything else to give consumers opportunities to delve deeper into the storyline, so long as Sega has the money to fund such a venture. Hope for anybody out there trying to stop the cheese. Nobody's stopping me. He blames the cop, but please.
A Mad World, the 2009 beat em up hack and slash masterpiece, disgustingly underplayed and underdiscussed by the gaming community. This game couldn't possibly be as great of an experience as it is without Jefferson Island being plunged into an apocalyptic setting, with everyone quite literally everywhere fighting to the death just to keep themselves alive under Death Watch's sadistic rule. The unique and perfectly stylish uncolored manga Sin City art style, albeit one I could see why people hate. Couldn't go better with the environment, with indelible talent molding the cause of global warming since it's so fire. With the Jay-Z Linkin Park Collision Course inspired soundtrack tailored to the preferences of a western demographic at the time. Check out that album if you're into metal and or hip-hop. It's an amazing project, along with Mad World soundtrack. The over-the-top violence is something it would be hard not to enjoy knowing the concerning levels of satisfaction that come with opponents as gut-wrenchingly as possible. All wonderfully fused together to make a game much more than- All wonderfully fused together to make a game much more than worth checking out. Let's go.